One of a parent's biggest worries, becoming a grandparent too soon. Every community in Kenya grapples with the challenge of early pregnancy. Faced with staggering statistics, we set out to find out what different communities in four counties are doing to deal with this challenge. Our first stop, Suba. Vida Acheng is a form one student at Waondo Secondary School. She's one of the brightest too. Her consistent A's in her report forms tells of a story of brilliance and determination. These results hardly tell the story of a girl, often young, abused in an incestuous relationship, forced into a polygamous marriage, but who then walks out 11 years later and heads right back to class. Today, Vida is 26. If not for death, I'll be somebody else now because I know, I know what I'm capable of. When her mother died just after she was invited to join Form 1 at Luak Girls High School, Vida's life changed. At the age of 13, she got her first child out of incest. Relatives then decided to marry her off to a man 20 years her senior as a second wife. I was still very young, but had to work hard to make the children and a living they do, to live just like others. The man would not even know that a child is supposed to go to school. I would have to do everything. What made you decide to run away? Try to make my future again. Try to plan it so that the children could not undergo what I want, so that I can be someone who can be educated here. Today she is an inspiration to other students who are also mothers at Waondo School. The girls here say many of them were lured into early sex in exchange for favors like a motorbike lift. You are a strong one, you know that? Yes. It takes a lot of courage to do what you have done. And it's okay to cry. The first day they don't ask you anything. The second day they don't ask you anything. But the third day they ask you that, no, you are just going with me, you are taking mine without money. You want, there's nothing which is going for free. Now they know better. That's why they return to school. These five young women with me here are some of the most resilient students in Kenya today. I say resilient because they are all mothers. But in spite of being mothers, they have decided to continue with their education. Waonda School has a population of 400, and just over half of the students here are orphaned, mainly as a result of AIDS. 35 out of 140 girls enrolled here are mothers. In other words, one in every four female students has a child. We don't need a lot to say about it. Radical change, yes. The principal, Simeon Ratego, says that often girls who double up as household heads are extremely vulnerable. To make ends meet, some are forced to engage in sex for pay of some sort, like a lift to school. Others who are taken in by grandparents lack strong role models to guide them. Issues of sexuality. They are considered sacred and can never be discussed at, at, at a sitting with the parent and the child. And so the burden remains for the people in school, like us teachers, or maybe in the church. Vida has since reunited with her paternal family, a family she met after her mother died. She lives with her grandmother. She tells me she's had to make some tough adjustments. There I used to sleep in my own bed, a very big one. I would sleep the way I like. But when I came here, I would sleep at my grandma's house here. I would spread a mat, sleep there with my cousins. As the eldest grandchild, Vida has many responsibilities in this homestead. But what is important for her is that now she has a second chance to pursue her dream to become a journalist. Her age is no deterrent, but it hasn't been easy. Sometimes I will just cry because uh, 
I'll just be thinking now of my own children. I've left them behind. They are suffering and I came back to get the education. Yet sometimes I just spend even a week at home because of lack of school fee. Her grandmother has got her back. Koro konya kakada mare omio aere onya ti woda wun mare maduong. Yamin mare bende nitie. Bende no se biro kamo nyuam na dok. Achamo. As she walks to the river at Luanda in Suba, Vida says that when she looks back at what she's been through, she feels motivated to fight on. After running away from her matrimonial home, her husband followed her to her grandmother's and reported her to the children's department for neglecting her children. When she tried to pick them up from Karachuonyo, where she was married, her husband refused to let them go. Vida explained that she had nowhere to take them. They were probably better off with their father. But it was no easy decision. Sometimes even if I see somebody's child crying, I feel some pain. I just think mine is also crying on the other side. When we first visited her at school, we asked her to think about escorting us to Karachuonyo to meet her estranged husband. During our second visit to her home, she still felt she was not ready to face her estranged family. Me going there, I don't think it will happen much sooner. Maybe later, I will plan it later. But I wish I could see them even now. How do you think they'll react when they see you finally? I think they will be shocked because uh, like uh, the last one he was still very young. I don't think he will even recognize me. She calls her neighbors often to ask how her three children are doing. Her grandmother's support is helping her wade through this murky journey. I ask her what she thinks about her granddaughter's decision. Koro somo, koro kanya sayo ye, oneno kama dikete, kodo yudo ngato, kodo somo chwere, sister beti nitie. The on deck sister, uti, ubi opeda kwa kapokato. And so Vida remains an icon of determination at her village in Luanda, her school at Waondo, and now her country, Kenya. She has remained at the top of her class for the three terms of this year. She is counting three more years ahead of her before she can pursue her dream career journalism and return to Karachuonyo to hopefully take her children and give them a better life. They, she says, are her motivation. Ansu Mwendia, KTN.